Somebody say no. No to national policy. No to national policy. <laughs> no to national policy. <laughs> so we already know that Amos was an early writing prophet. And we know that God called him out of Judah, Judah to go to Israel and preach. But one foundational principle that we, we have to talk about, and that's Jeroboam number one. Because when the kingdoms were split, Jeroboam number one became king of the northern kingdom. And make no mistake, mistake about it, God gave him the kingdom. But what happened that he thought he had to fortify himself. He was afraid that the people would return back to Judah, so he set up these false gods. Really what he did was he put in a national policy. He put in a national policy that said that we're not going to go back to Jerusalem anymore, but we're going to stay here, and we're going to create these calves, and, and these are the gods that brought you out of Egypt. But how many know that's not how it is? No to national policy. So when Amos began to speak, it was a familiar mantra. When he said, woe to this kingdom and woe to that kingdom. But when he came to Israel, something different happened. It wasn't about chastisement anymore. It was about judgment. God was finished because he had already sent prophets to prophesy to Israel. He had sent unnamed prophets and he had sent Ahijah and Elijah and Elisha and other prophets to warn Egypt, I mean Israel. But now judgment has come. And that judgment is Israel is going to be destroyed. But these people lived in a time where things were going really well, so they couldn't see it. National policy was working. They had confidence in government. They had confidence in their military might. They had confidence in their own success, and they had confidence in their own wealth. But what had happened was they had begun to take for granted the mercy of God, and that is that he didn't give them what they deserved. And, and they had taken for granted the favor of God in that God blessed them when they didn't deserve it. But God sends Amos to tell them, your time is up. Judgment is now coming. My protection is going to be lifted and, and all of my hedge is going to be gone and all of my benefits are going to be gone. And now the protection from the lion is gone. When the lion roars, he's going to eat something. The snare is set and it's going to catch something. And that thing that is going to be caught is you, Israel. My judgment is come. Hallelujah. Now Israel will be destroyed. Your military might won't save you. If you do get away from the lion, you're going to run into the bear. That's what the Bible says. My judgment has come. And when you parallel America, when you parallel America to Israel, what you find is a nation that's patterning themselves after a doomed nation. America today is attempting to make national policies that remove God from the main stage. They would even uh, take, take the memory of God out of our history, telling us that we came to America for pros prosperity, not to be able to freely worship God. That's what we came for. Hallelujah. And the NAACP would even have you believe that they were the ones that brought us out of slavery, out of bondage. But how many know it was God that did these things? And just as Israel, America's goal seemed to be one where we're trying to get God out, that we don't need him to govern us. We don't need him to tell us what's right and what's wrong. And, and the laws of America are being redefined. Somebody said no to national policy. Hallelujah. And though the nation is doing these things, 
we have still been prosperous, just like Israel. We're forsaking God, and we're taking for granted his mercy, and we're taking for granted his favor. Hallelujah. But how long? How long before God says no turning? No turning for America. How long? But as we say, our revival must begin with us. We have to take our marching orders from the Bible, from the scriptures. We must be like Mordecai when, when there was a national policy enacted that would destroy God's people. He ran through the streets crying aloud ha, and sparing not. And there were those who listened to the message and rallied with him. And he delivered a message for us all. He told us, and Esther in particular, he told us that we can't be at ease. We can't be at ease, Zion. We can't be at ease because sooner or later those things are going to touch you. Sooner or later, those things are going to touch you. So we're crying tonight. We're crying tonight to Zion. We're telling the secrets of the enemy. There is no safety in silence. We must do something. Hallelujah. There is no safety in silence. We must cry aloud. We have to do something. For if we do nothing, our fate will be the same as the fate of of Israel. Our world is changing. We're already become a people in a strange land. Do you see it? Do you see it? We must, we must cry aloud. We must spare not, and we must do something. Clap your hands for Jesus. Well, we just going to keep this thing going real fast. Amos 6 and 1. It begins with the word woe. It begins with the word woe. Woe means misfortune, calamity, economic woes, political woes. This is the second great woe, the first woe being Amos 5 and 18, where it is written, woe unto, woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. See, the overconfidence of the entire nation of Jews was founded in their regard for Zion, Jerusalem, as the place where God's name was recorded and, consider, and considered by them invulnerable to any disaster, what, whatever of the nature, especially in the northern kingdom, upon the strength of the military fortifications of the mountain of Samaria, the confidence they had in Samaria, nevertheless justified to the certain extent by the unusual strength of this place. But when it finally fell, somebody say fell. When it finally fell, it took some three years to subdue it. The great error lay in the people having forgotten unless the Lord keep the city. Unless the Lord keep the city. The watchman walketh but in vain. Psalms 120, 127 and 1. God's gospel of dealing with mankind in the gospel is a gospel of grace. But Amos, the, his emphasis was not upon the grace, but his emphasis was upon the law and the obedience. We can, you can look around right now. This is a very unobedient country. Unobedient country. It emphasizes something that we should all look to today. It is the gospel of the law, for that too is gospel, to understand and obey God's law, God, the way God governs his, his world, that's the way of peace. To ignore it is the way to, dest to destruction. He has, at, at ease in, in Zion, has entered all the language as an idiom for self-indulgent, complacency, indifference, and overconfidence. These people misunderstood the terms of the covenant, thinking that God would spare Jerusalem regardless of what they did. Regardless of what they did, they were at ease in Zion. They were trusting in the mountain of Samaria, a natural fortress which Israel leaders must have thought impregnable. Now, my title that I may have, I think I got about five more minutes, 
too big for your britches. America has become too big for their britches. What does too big for your britches mean? It means to have a conceit, a, high, a too high opinion of oneself. If someone is too big for their britches, they, they have an exaggerated sense of their own importance. When you disagree with the God of the Bible, you are too big for your britches. When you boo God, you are too big for your britches. And I, I'm getting ready to sit down, and I, got, I just got one, uh, one, more, one more thing I want to say. We had 25 men stand up against our pastor. 25. 25 men stand up against our pastor. But 25 years ago, a great man wrote these words. And I want to leave these words for these 25 men. You've been running and running, running for a long time. Your time is winding up. You better make up your mind. It's getting late in the evening. The sun is going down. You better get right while he may be found. All we want to know is where do you stand and who is on the Lord's side. Who's on the Lord's side? Who's on the Lord's side? Who's on the Lord's side? Come on, praise him if you're on the Lord's side. 